Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and I'm back with another video. I'm sorry it's been so long, I hope everyone's doing great. Today's video is super special because it's another collaboration with my wonderful patrons. A couple times a year we get together and vote on a theme, and those who are able to participate will create a doll in that theme. And this month's theme was Candyland. So I am so blown away with their beautiful dolls. Stay tuned to the end of the video for a closer look at their work and some information about each of the artists. Also make sure to follow them and Curiosities on Instagram to see more photos and a group photo, a couple more group photos. Also we'll be voting on another theme soon, so check out my Patreon to see what, uh, how you can be involved. The doll I decided to create with this collab was Willy Wonka. So I chose Willy Wonka from uh, the Willy Wonka version from my childhood, which was Gene Wilder, which I much prefer. So let's get started. So I decided to use one of these BTS dolls. Um, this actually isn't the one I ended up using. Um, I decided to uh, go with another one because the face sculpt was a little bit more fitting for Gene Wilder's face. So um, I apologize for that, but I'm just going ahead and showing how I did the initial prep work. These dolls were pretty similar to the Monster High and Ever After High dolls as far as uh, the hair removal and everything. I didn't notice really any differences in, in that. They're all Mattel dolls, so they are very similar as far as the con contraption that goes up to, into the head and the, uh, the vinyl and everything. I did, however, notice that removal of the face paint was quite a bit more difficult. Um, however, they printed these faces on, uh, stayed, stayed on very well, even with the acetone, so it took a lot of scrubbing. So I went ahead and painted directly over the paint that was already on the doll, um, just giving it a little bit more uh, color in some of the areas. I decided to stick with a darker color to um, because the uh, color of the hair, uh, I just wanted it to have a little bit of a darker root. So I just used some tacky glue and poured it in there and moved it around with a chopstick and kind of squished it around to make sure that it covered all the hair inside. So you may notice the face sculpt is a little bit different because I ended up rooting an entirely different doll for the rest of the process. <laughs> So my initial spray of Mr. Super Clear, uh, I use Mr. Super Clear Flat. If you are interested in what supplies I use, there's a link in my description box below um, to my uh, supplies on Amazon, and I usually update that. I've, I've, I've been updating that periodically, so uh, the my Amazon storefront's down in that description box below. If you click on that, you can see all the supplies I use, as well as little comments as to how I use them. So that's pretty helpful if you want to check that out. So the initial spray of Mr. Super Clear didn't give me as much tooth as I wanted, but I went ahead and pushed through because I knew that I could add more color later. I, I add several layers of color, so if it doesn't quite work out the first time, then I know that after a, a next couple of sprays that it'll build up better. By the way, I had just gotten done uh, dyeing some clothes or some, some fabric, so I apologize for the purple fingers. <laughs> So I'm starting out with some contouring uh, to make it look a little, uh, to make it as similar as possible to the contours in um, Gene Wilder's face. So, and then I'm going back with some highlights in white. So just kind of giving me the base to follow as I add more colors into different areas and different shading. Um, I just start out with the darker tan 
and the um, and the white, and then I start to add some pinks and blues and yellows and just just different colors that you may see in uh, a portrait. If you follow my channel on uh, YouTube or Instagram, you may know that most of my dolls have a surreal appearance with sort of large eyes and they don't exactly look like the character they're portraying. They just kind of have some characteristics of those characters and I'm fine with uh, doing that. That's actually how I enjoy making uh, my dolls. But with this one, I decided to work on my portrait doll skills, which is giving it a more realistic look. So if you're a supporter over on Patreon, one of this month's rewards is a demo with tips on how to make portrait dolls. And I'll also be sharing some behind the scenes information on how I make, made my original doll from scratch that I have in the um, uh, Afterlife doll show at the Penumbra Gallery in Portugal. So um, check that out on my Instagram and uh, the in the description box below is my Patreon link so you can see what I have to offer there. been a little while since I've done some filming so I'm sorry that my hair's in the way and my fingers are purple and everything my apologies as I'm doing this voiceover I'm realizing the quality isn't as great as I'd like it to be my apologies so Gene Wilder has um, some smile lines that are quite deep so I'm working on shading those and then adding the lines in with some pencil and then I'm going back to the various highlights and just kind of trying to keep those making sure those continue to pop in the areas of the cheeks and the forehead with this uh, sculpt this final sculpt many of the characteristics of it don't lend itself very well to a portrait uh, or to look exactly like the character um, so I just have to kind of push it where I can to pick up the areas that I want to look as close to him as possible, especially in the eyes and the nose and the lips. Because the forehead and the chin, there's not much I can do about that without carving it, and I opted not to carve this one. So I'm working to keep those eyebrows lower to the eyelids and making them thicker as um, the character or the the, per, uh, the actor Gene Wilder's eyebrows are a little thicker but not too thick and closer down to the actual eyes. I gave him some sideburns with the hair with the rooting, but I wanted to go back and do a little bit of blending that out with the pencil. I hope you're not hearing some loud noises as I'm doing this voiceover. We are right near uh, the Charlotte Motor Speedway and there's uh, it's race week here and there's lots of races going on and there there's some very loud car noises <laughs> and things so I hope that this isn't picking those up. If it is, I'm sorry. So I'm blending out the eyes with um, some blue and white, different shades of blue, added a tiny bit of yellow in there I believe 
just to give an alternate highlight and some dimension in those eyes. Going back with the white pencil to add some detail highlights. One of my favorite tools to use is an X-Acto knife which will help pick up any um, dust particles kind of helps you not have to re erase larger areas you can kind of just pick up pencil and uh, markings with it so I just gave him um, several sprays of Mr. Super Clear for the final sprays And onto the costume. So I'm making some pants using one of my patterns. These are some patterns that are available to my patrons in the reward library. This is the men pant pattern. And just cutting it out of some khaki fabric. cutting out with these shears because it helps the fabric from fraying. And first I cut everything out and then pin it up and then I take it to my sewing machine. Some of the smaller areas I'll sew by hand but lately I've been using my sewing machine for the larger pieces. This is a pattern for, this is a new pattern I made for my, um, for a shirt or a vest. So he's wearing a double vested or double breasted vest on the show. So I made using that flower pattern fabric, I made the vest out of that. And then just a white shirt. And then I used this purple velvet that I had on hand from one of my previous collections. I used that for the jacket. I gave it some of this backing material um, that you just kind of iron on to give it some stiffness. And there's the final look. So I have a couple more videos that I've been editing to be posting soon, so stay tuned for those. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified for future videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. Remember again to stay tuned here for in a moment for the final photos and photos and information of my collaborators. Extra special thanks to my patrons for all of your support and for those who were able to participate. Wonderful work, everyone. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.